If something like the Black Death ever happens again, that would scare the living hell out of me. Of course, that's probably never going to happen again due to the advancement of modern medicine, and the fact that nowadays we're much better at responding to this kind of stuff. We have laboratories ready, the officials are ready to quarantine any area whenever it needs to happen. The reason I'm talking about this is because of the new coronavirus outbreak happening in China right now. As I'm recording this, it's Thursday 9 in the morning, and a major city with 11 million people is being quarantined. That definitely is scary, and it's been on my mind since I woke up, so now I feel like I want to make a video on it, just for the heck of it. So this is going to be a bit more of a rant compared to my usual style of videos I make. I want to talk about outbreaks in general, what China has been doing in response, and some problems with medicine in general in China. Because for the longest time now, I've been pretty upset with the healthcare system in one of the biggest countries hosting almost 1.5 billion people. Now just a bit of background about me that I've never revealed before since I like to remain relatively anonymous on this channel. I'm Asian American, specifically I'm Chinese American. I was born in the States, but I went to middle and high school in China before I came back to the States for college. I've lived in multiple different provinces, and I very often and visit multiple provinces whenever I go back. In fact, I actually just came back from there. I didn't go to Wuhan actually, otherwise I might actually could have contracted the coronavirus. Imagine that, and if for some reason I decided to stay in China a bit longer than I have and visited Wuhan for whatever reason, I would have been stuck there and probably would not have been able to come back. I would have just disappeared and nothing would have been uploaded to my channel and you guys would not have known what happened to me. Normally of course I would just post on Twitter, but China blocking so many goddamn websites really infuriates me. The worst part about visiting the country for a month is that you can't access YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. I had to pre-upload and pre-prepare all my videos before I left, because guess what, China also just slows down any website that isn't Chinese. If you wanted to watch Chinese shows on their streaming platform, it's incredibly fast, but if you just want to browse some memes on any other website for example, your internet slows down so much I thought I was back in the early 2000s. That's not nearly as bad as so many different sites being censored though, which is why for me at least a VPN is almost crucial. Oh hey, by the way, what a coincidence, we have a sponsor for today's video. These guys have been supporting me for a while now, so you're definitely familiar with them, NordVPN. If you're stuck in Wuhan because of the coronavirus and can't access your favorite websites, definitely check out NordVPN. Although I don't know how you're watching this in the first place, but if you're looking to access your favorite platforms without having to worry about China's censorship, I always recommend Nord. Of course, China isn't the only country to censor content, so NordVPN is great when traveling in general. They have over 5,500 servers in 60 countries. With a simple click of a button, you can instantly connect and protect your data while traveling or on public connections. No matter what device you are using, including Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and Linux, a Nord subscription can connect you to up to six devices simultaneously. Very useful for people like me since I have two laptops and a phone while I travel, and I can share this connection with my family as well. If you are interested, be sure to head over to nordvpn.org slash stick or use the coupon code stick to get a discount of 70% off the three-year plan for $3.49 per month. And if you do so, they'll throw in a free month. That's nordvpn.org slash stick. Other than internet censorship, which I absolutely despise, that's not the only thing I dislike about how China handles things, especially when it comes to healthcare and medicine. Let's take the SARS outbreak in 2002, for example. And yes, this is relevant since the new coronavirus is related to SARS, sharing about 70% of its DNA. I don't know what is up with China and its obsession with censoring things. They didn't report the outbreak to the World Health Organization until much, much later. In addition, there was a huge censorship of information when it happened. Many people in the country, especially those that resided outside the outbreak locations, had no idea what was happening. Why actively refuse to give crucial reports and information? Now, the handling of the new coronavirus outbreak has been handled better since then, but there are still huge delays. I don't claim to be an expert on the laws and processes in mainland China, but from what I've gathered from articles and whatnot, it seems like there are very time-consuming procedures before the new virus can be officially declared, and you need confirmation from multiple laboratory tests. Which, you know, sounds all nice and dandy. You probably want to be certain before you actually make such a declaration, but surely it doesn't have to be that bulletproof. I'll give China credit though for investing a lot in their disease control since the SARS outbreak, so good job on that. You know what the worst part about this outbreak is though? It's Chinese New Year, which happens this year on the 25th of January. People are going to be traveling, visiting relatives, relatives and doing New Year stuff. They take this holiday a lot more seriously than any holiday anywhere in the states. So you bet people are going to be angry when they can't travel. And you can't stop them all. We'll see a surge in traveling, which if anything would only facilitate the spread of the new coronavirus. How is China going to handle this? It's going to be incredibly difficult. The timing is just so unlucky. Actually, you know what? By the time I release this video, Chinese New Year probably already passed, so yeah. But I am recording this on Thursday. Problems in the Chinese healthcare system isn't just limited to disease control. One of the biggest concerns I had is how treatments are handled 
cold for certain illnesses, such as the common cold. Here in the States, it's common practice to be very wary about how antibiotics are used. For example, we think ahead and consider future consequences of our actions today. Overusing antibiotics will lead to more resistance in the future, especially since resistance is occurring faster than we can develop new antibiotics. China, on the other hand, has a big problem of antibiotic misuse and is not necessarily the government's fault, although they could be doing more to control this issue. If you have an infection, bacteria, or even viral infections, it is very common practice to receive antibiotics in the form of IV drips. Especially for younger doctors who have less experience, they're more likely to prescribe these drips. In middle school, when I got a fever, for example, my parents would sometimes just take me to the hospital and we'd have the IV drips for a couple hours. Of course, as a kid, I had no idea what these liquids were, but now I know them to be antibiotics. You're using antibiotics to treat a viral infection? Hello? Why is no one talking about this? But you know, it's any sort of infection, really. Don't feel so good? Here, have a bag of broad-spectrum antibiotics. Holy hell, the misuse is insane. But you can't exactly blame doctors for this. Especially in major cities, the population is just so big that doctors would only get like a few minutes sometimes to see a patient. Not enough doctors to go around essentially, so it's common practice for them to just prescribe an IV drip just to get the patient out of the way. That and there's just such a high demand for these drips. The common Chinese person isn't educated enough about antibiotics and they often see doctors demanding these prescriptions. It's not like here in the states where people have respect for doctors. It's not uncommon for patients to actively become outraged and in some cases even try to hurt their doctors in China. So as a physician, it's so much easier to just prescribe a drip for them to avoid conflict and to get them out of your busy schedule. It's unfortunate, but that's just how it is. Now, the situation has been better now compared to when I was a kid, with hospitals actively putting quotas on IV bags and whatnot, but it's not as effective as one would imagine. Patients are just constantly demanding demanding these IV bags, and you can't really say no to them. What are you going to tell them? That the past few decades of using antibiotics was apparently a sham, and you should specifically listen to us now? And the problem isn't just limited to drips. When prescribing antibiotics as a pill to be consumed over the next week or so, many patients aren't aware that you're supposed to finish your pills. You're not supposed to stop after you feel better, you have to finish the prescription. But many people aren't aware of that, and it seems that perhaps doctors aren't making it clear enough. H. pylori is an infection that is relatively common in China during recent times, so many people have been taking pills and not finishing them. My dad is an example of this, and when I found out, I gave him a mini lecture. The point is, antibiotic misuse is an example of a problem in China's healthcare system. Here in the States, obviously, doctors are very careful in prescribing antibiotics, which is what we should be doing in all parts of the world. China, with 1.5 billion people, need to start thinking better about their healthcare system and the consequences of their actions. I'm not saying there's necessarily a perfect solution to this, but I do believe more has to be done. And of course, I'm not just targeting China here. I'm just relatively familiar with that country myself. I can't expect every system to be perfect, but I think we can strive to become as perfect as possible. A system, for example, in which it takes forever to declare an outbreak of a novel virus shouldn't be a thing. Procedures need to be as quick as possible. As a biologist myself, I can say for certain that the process of identifying a new virus, sequencing its genetic information, and confirming it's nothing we've seen before is not a long process whatsoever. It'll take a few days, which encompasses shearing up and isolating the genetic material, assembly, and finally trying to match it up with already known viruses. The great part is that this used to be incredibly difficult, but now technology has gone so far. Next generation sequencing has made this so easy, so it definitely isn't on the process of identifying the virus itself that's holding everything back. Now the virus has spread to other places, including the United States, Singapore, Hong Kong, Vietnam, etc. Airports have started to screen for the virus of visitors in response, which, you know, is fine, but wouldn't screening before flying them out be a better idea? This new coronavirus can be spread through the air and the environment within airplanes is a place where diseases spread very easily due to the close proximity of passengers during the flight. So what has been done in response? Chinese research laboratories have started developing vaccines. This is what I love about science, right? As soon as something like this happens, researchers are already on the job. They're the real heroes of these stories. But of course, research takes time and it'll be at least a few months before something solid passes clinical trials. For now, we'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, that's my time today. This has certainly been a weird episode. Tell me in the comment section below if you enjoy this style. I've basically been ranting to myself, but a video like this does require more work and time to be completed compared to my regular debunking videos, so I guess don't expect them too often. Before I go, I would like to say good luck to people who have to deal with this new virus, no matter if you're someone infected, know someone who's infected, or live in a city close to the outbreak. In my opinion, diseases like these are a painful reminder that nature just doesn't care. It'll do whatever it pleases without any thought of humans. While scary, that's just reality. And everyone will have to deal with it when it comes to it. There's no shame. I don't know why the Chinese government sometimes refuses to disclose outbreaks like these in their own country. I can only guess it has something to do with preserving their own image, which is so dumb. Problems like these require cooperation between all types of people to solve. More investment into science is also appreciated, such as developing better technologies. And finally, we can reduce the time commitment required to make declarations of new disease outbreaks. We're talking about people's lives here and
and any system that is good and prevents the loss of more lives is always better. Anyway, end of rant. Thank you to Fireshard and Liam for their support over at Patreon. Also a shout out to my other loyal patrons, Rick Klen, Chris Britton, Dave Osler, Tom Schaefer, Anna, Phil Costopoulos, Garrett R, Aided Furball, as well as everyone else on a lower tier. I wouldn't be here without all your help, so I am truly grateful. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you later.